Okay, so in this video, we want to talk about pagination, and this is very similar to how we would do it in Laravel. And I'm going to use the user model and create a bunch of users so we can have some data. So let's go back to our project and open database and then seeders and database seeder. And I'm going to get rid of this method down here and use this factory and create maybe 30 users. So let's save this one and close it, open the terminal and run php artisan db seed. And so we should have a bunch of users now. If we open database, we have 33 users and only two of them have an image. Now I want to show these users in a table on our homepage. So let's go to the web.php where we have the home route. And I just want to add a third argument to this inertia function that would be an array of the props or data. So we want to send the users to this view. And this is how you would do it in Laravel. So we want to grab the model that we want to use, in this case it's user, and then say grab all of them. All right, so then we can go to the home view component and accept the user as a prop. So we want to use define props macro and say we are expecting a user of type object. Okay, so now let's go back to our website and let's just open view dev tools. So if we check out our home component, you notice we have this users array with 33 elements in it. And each element is a user where we have ID, avatar, name, email, and so on. But you notice here, we do not have the password and the remember me token from the users table. And that's because in our user model, we have this hidden array. And within that we have password and remember me token. This is a way to protect sensitive data to be exposed to the front end application. So if we, for example, get rid of this password in this array and refresh our site, and now we can see the password field being exposed to the front end. So this is just a security measure that you wanna keep in mind when you send information or props or data to the front end application. You want to be careful about what you are sending over. Now, since we are using this default users model, Laravel automatically applies this hidden array. But if we were making our own model, we wouldn't usually do this, but it's a good practice. However, there are multiple ways to address this issue. For example, in this all method, we could specify which columns do we want to expose. So we could pass an array and say, only name. Now, if we again check out our website, you can see we have only the name of the users in these objects. But we want to talk about pagination. So we already know that in Laravel, we have a paginate method that would basically give us a paginator. So it is not just a simple array anymore or a collection, but it is a paginator. And this function would take the number of elements that we want to show on a page, let's say five. Let's just go to our website and again, give it a refresh. And now if we check out the home component, we have our users object, but now it is not just a simple array. It's a paginator with bunch of properties. For example, we have the current page, which is one. We have the first page URL. We have the last page. We have the total number of the elements. And most importantly, I would say we have our data, which is an array of the elements on each page. So we have five users on each page. Then we have the links. So these are the pagination links. And you notice we have nine elements here. The first one and the last one are the previous and the next button. And then we have the numbers. So since we are using Vue.js and we don't have the links function, which is available in the blade template, we need to create our own pagination links. And we can use this object here to get the links and show them to the users. But before we get to that, let's just add a table here and show the user's information. All right, so I added some code here, which is just basic HTML and CSS. And I have a table with a table head with four columns and one table row so that we can repeat for each user. And at the moment, I'm just hard coding name, email, date, and an image. And down here, I have a placeholder for pagination links, which we will get to it. So in our website, we can see the table right here, and we just have to fill this with the data that we get from our user's object. So we want to repeat a row for each user, and we want to add the V4 on this table row. So let's say v4 
user in users data so remember that the actual users are inside this data array and then we need to provide the key we can use the user id and then we need to fill this information so for the name we just want to say user that name the email is going to be the same and for the registration date i'm going to use user dot created at and later on we will format this properly so this is what we see we have five users on one page and also their images now again some of these users have image some of them don't so we can make this source attribute of our image conditional just like the previous video so let's bind it and say if the user avatar was true then go to storage first and concatenate that user avatar otherwise let's just render our default image so we want to say a storage avatars default image go back to our website we see that only two users have a custom image the rest is the same but this is already working so if we manually add page two up here so we want to say question mark page equals to two or three you notice we are on page two so we can go back and forth on these pages we just have to add the links so it is more user friendly but before that let's just format this very quickly and i have a simple javascript function that would just format the date the way i want and i'm going to add it here inside the script tags of our home view component basically i just created a function that would accept a date and using the date constructor from javascript we format this the way we want so down here instead of passing the date like this i'm going to use that function and then pass user created at within that function so now we have a nicer date format so now let's render the pagination links so again if i bring up dev tools we have our users then links and each link has three property whether it is active or not and then the label and the url so we are going to utilize those and create our pagination links so back to our project we're going to use the link element here and we want to use the v4 on this one and say for each link in the users links array render a link so let's add the key and i'm just going to use the link label because that is unique now for the content of these links we could say link label but there is a tiny problem here back to our website you can see the links down here but we also have these weird looking text that is because this previous and next button they have these arrows next to it and those arrows are html symbols so instead of passing the label like this as the text content of our link we can use the vhtml directive and then set it to link label so this would translate that html symbol to the proper arrow like this now we have previous with two arrows to the left and then next with two arrows to the right all right so now we can also set the href to link dot url save it and give it a refresh so now let's go to page three there we go and you can see the uri is updated as well we can go to the next page next page and so on and when we get to the last page this next link is not going anywhere so the url of this next link is going to be null so let's add some styles here i'm just going to add some padding all around and margin x left and right so that's our links let's say i want to add some conditional classes as well so i'm going to bind the class attribute and then say for example the text color should be this slate 300 if the link url is null so we are just going to negate it like this and back to our website you can see this next button is muted because there is no next page but if we go back to page six it is active again and remember we also have an active property too so for example right now we are on page six we can use that and make another condition here so this is an object right so i'm just going to add another condition and say for example text blue 500 and also font medium if the link is active so back to our website you notice page six is blue and if we go to page five now page five is blue page four and so on if we go all the way back to page one now the previous button is muted so that's basically how pagination works and the rest is just some styling and adding features if you wanted to now two more things i just want to add for this video the first one is going to be a text here that shows how many results we have on one page and then how many is the total much like the default pagination in laravel so for example under the link i'm going to create a p tag 
and just say showing something to something of something results these are going to be numbers and the numbers that we want to show they are available on the users object itself so not within the links so we can say users from and then for the two we want to say users two and the last one is going to be users total so let's save this one and if we go back to our website you notice down here it says showing one to five of 33 results if i go to page five it says showing 21 to 25 of 33 now for the last thing in this video I have a component that I just created for this pagination link that I'm going to add it here so we can use it and it is just HTML and CSS and applying different classes conditionally so we get a proper result so what I'm going to do in our components folder I'm going to create a new component and I'm going to call it pagination links dot view then I'm going to paste the code that I have all I'm doing here I am accepting a prop that I'm calling it paginator and the type of it is object and it is required so what we want to pass here is the user's object because that's what we are calling it when we are sending it to the view component. Then I have a function here that would find those previous and next buttons and turn them into simple arrows. Then in the template itself, I have the wrappers with my CSS classes and I am looping over that links within the paginator. In this case, it's going to be our users. And instead of using a link component or any other element, I'm using this a special component from Vue.js. So this component which is called component allows us to declare what sort of an element we want to render using this is attribute and in this case i'm saying if the link url exists then render a link element otherwise render a span element because if it's not a link then there is no point to render a link and then we set the href to the link url whatever that is for the text of those links i'm using the function that i declared up here so we would have just the numbers and the arrows left and right then some regular classes and also some conditional classes so i'm adding some hover effect and also some muted styles and active styles and down here I have that text that just says showing from to something. All right, so nothing about Inertia.js. It is just some Vue.js and HTML and CSS. So in our homepage, instead of all of this, I want to use that component. So I can delete this. And first, we want to import that pagination links from components and pagination links .view. So we can use it down here. And we said we are looking for a paginator so we can bind this to the user's prop that we are accepting up here all right so if we go back to our website now we have this kind of nice looking pagination link as well as the text on the right so if i just zoom out we can see much better what's going on here so we go to page six or other pages and everything works properly and of course all of this code will be available in github which is linked in the description thanks for watching see you at the next one